This is Professor Ryan Paul, and this lecture is on developing a topic, how to go from a general idea of a subject that you want to research to more specific areas of interest that you can start asking questions on and actually doing research on. So let's go back to the very first stage of a research project where your initial task is just to find something to research. So you have to find a subject that you wish to learn about and contribute to, something that you think you have a persuasive case to make that will help other people understand a certain subject. Uh, the challenges at this stage, of course, are that it's a subject that must be big and complex enough to support research. There has to be enough material out there to research. It must be, on the other hand, specific enough to focus attention. So there's a particular question or problem or issue that you're addressing that you can answer. And it's something that needs to be relevant and interesting to your readers. So what do we do? Let's say we just have a very general topic. Where do we go? So let's say you have just a very general topic. This is a topic perhaps that's been given to you by the professor or it's the general subject of your course. Um, or it might be something that you're interested in, but you're not sure of the specifics. Let's say our topic is education. Obviously a very broad subject. We need to find a specific angle, a specific hook to get into the subject. So the first step is just to start thinking about common phrases. Anything that has that word in it that might be related to the topic. So for education, we can start thinking what phrases have the word education in them? Well, higher education, high school education, education reform, secretary of education, department of education, pre-K education, K through 12 education, adult education. These are all phrases that have the word education in them. Uh, again, we're building up the topic is in some ways getting bigger, but we're getting more specific, some specific areas that we can start looking at and focusing our attention on. So just come up with whatever phrases, as many phrases as you can, that have that word, the word that's the, the name of your topic, your general subject, in it. What's helpful about this step is that it helps you to start focusing on specific aspects. You can find all these different areas within the broad topic of education that you might want to focus on and can also help you identify particular figures, institutions, and areas to study. So, for example, the Department of Education. That's a very particular angle on the general subject of education. So coming up with these phrases can start giving you the lay of the land, some ground uh, on which to start beginning your research and asking your questions. Step two is you want to think about who cares about this subject, who's invested in it, who's interested in it, who is affected by it. So um, we have politicians, also government agencies, teachers in schools are, of course, interested in education, parents, students, reporters, uh, academics and researchers. There might be other institutions and think tanks. Now, I've given very general ones here, but when you start doing this in your research, you want to try to identify specific figures. So you might talk about particular politicians like our current Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, or you might talk about, again, the government agency, the Department of Education, the Texas School Board. Uh, are there specific schools, specific teachers that you're thinking of that have talked about this topic, um, particular academics, particular institutions, right? So think about specifics. Who have you heard talking about this topic? Who is invested in it? This step is important because it helps you not only identify interested parties, but also thinking about who your potential audience might be. Your potential audience could be, for example, politicians or people who are interested in the political issues related to education. And um, so you might want to form your argument, pitch it specifically to that audience. It also helps you start to identify who the different sides or perspectives are on the topic. You might identify two different groups or academics or politicians or whoever it might be that have different philosophies, different approaches to the topic of education. And it can also start to help you identify specific sources and experts that you may wish to research, um, either as specific sources for your own argument or as to, to help you uh, explain what the problem or situation that you're investigating is.
Step three, now that you've thought about who have you heard talking about this, where have you heard it discussed? And by that, I don't mean, well, I was standing on the street corner and I heard someone talking about it, but what are the venues in which discussion of this topic goes on? So again, thinking about education, well, it's a topic that's come up in political debates. Um, it's a topic that comes up in campaign ads. It's a topic that's discussed on news programs and in newspapers. Uh, it's discussed at campus events. Uh, it might be discussed in your classroom. Right? So, and there are various other venues, blogs, um, commercials, documentaries, whatever it might be. There's all sorts of different venues where the topic might be discussed. So identify, again, just as you on the last step, I was giving you the general sorts of people who might talk about this topic. Here I'm giving you general sorts of areas where it might be discussed. When you do this for your own topic, be specific. So not just I've heard about it in newspapers, but in the New York Times. Not I heard about it in campaign ads, but in Donald Trump's presidential ad, I heard him talking about this subject. So be specific when thinking about where have you heard it discussed. Step three is important because, again, it can help you identify the interested parties and the different sides or perspectives on the topic because you'll be seeing where they publish uh, and there might be particular journals or venues that are devoted to exploring one side or one aspect of the issue at hand. And it can also help identify those venues or publications that are going to be useful for other sources. So if you find that there is a journal, for example, devoted to education, um, then you say, ah, well, that journal is something that I want to look through. There might be other articles that are related to it um, besides the one that you found or the couple that you've already found in that source. So it can help you identify where else you want to look when you're doing research. Step four is to think about related topics. So what other issues, people, figures, problems are related to the topic of education? This is very similar to step one, except here we're expanding our reach, not just phrases that have the word education in them, but things that are related to it. And of course, you could have done this at the same time as step one. I am artificially separating these things out into different steps for ease of explanation. So what are some things that you might have heard about that are related to the topic of education? Well, you might have heard about student loan and student loan debt, charter schools, uh, questions about high stakes testing, issues about school voucher programs, uh, debates over state funding of higher education or K through 12 education, questions about the taxes and funding of education, uh, admission standards. Right? These are all subjects that are related to the topic of education, current debates, current controversies, things that people are interested in who are interested in the general subject of education. So list as many as you can that are related to your topic. Step four is important because it helps focus your attention on a specific question on a specific topic. It gives you a, a problem, um, a more specific idea to investigate. So if you're thinking you move from education to the slightly more specific area of higher education to the even more specific area of student loan debt in higher education, now you've narrowed it down to a particular issue that you can start investigating and asking questions about, something that you can make an argument about. This also helps identify issues that are relevant and important, things that people care about, things that are current in the discussion about education, so you have a way to go. Step five is to think about what academic subjects, what academic disciplines study this topic. So just make a list of academic disciplines, like the departments that we have here on campus, that might be interested in your subject. And you can combine that discipline with the title of your subject using words like of, in, or and. And this will bring you to not only both specific ways you can approach the topic, but also more search terms to help you find research. So science, philosophy, literature, sociology, history, art, economics, etc., etc. You could get more specific. Instead of science, you could say biology, chemistry, physics. Um, and just combine these terms. So philosophy of education, that could be a research topic. What is What are the philosophical approaches to education? Or philosophy education, that is the teaching of philosophy. How is it taught? That could be an area of research. Similarly, 
the history of education or history education. And you want to get more specific. Um, on the top part is just using it with our general topic, but let's say we've identified a more specific term, and then you can use that and combine it again with these disciplines. The economics of school vouchers, the history of charter schools in particular, the ethics of public school funding. So these are ways that you can, again, start to expand your research and figure out avenues, approaches to your topic. Step five is important because it provides a lot of guidance. Um, it can provide a specific set of conventions and ideas to guide your research. So, for example, if you're looking at the economics of school vouchers, that gives you a very specific set of tools. Economists ask certain types of questions. They have certain concepts that they apply. They have particular ideas that they're interested in investigating. So, if you are studying this from an economic perspective, you have the economic vocabulary and methods to use. That would be different from, for example, a philosopher or a historian who's going to use a different set of tools to approach the topic. And this also helps to identify the specific question or goal. Because, for example, uh, someone who's investigating the economics of school vouchers is going to be interested probably in figuring out the most cost-effective way, the most efficient way of doing something. Whereas, for example, a philosopher who's investigating school vouchers is going to be more interested in questions like ethics, um, the ethics of school vouchers, or the fairness of the system. So different goals, different types of questions and answers, depending on the approach that you take. And finally, of course, it can help you identify specific experts and publications for further study. If you know you're looking at it from an economical point of view, you want to look for economic experts and publications. So this is very helpful for really providing you with a lot of structured guidance for your approach to the topic. So let's review what we've talked about here. What we're talking about is how you unpack your topic, how you move from a very general, vague idea to something more specific that you can really write about. And the steps in doing this, you want to identify associated topics, people, publications, anything that's related to it. And you also want to identify other aspects of the subject, specific sub-problems or uh, sub sets of the general topic and the disciplines that would be interested in it. And all these steps that we've done in steps one through five, it's geared first towards providing you with a large amount of information, ideas that you can use to begin your search. So you're going to go from education, for example, to a whole list of different terms, names, phrases, and ideas. And then you start combining these different search terms, these different ideas and phrases, and you use them to help you find specific sources in the databases. So you might, for example, combine school vouchers, secretary of education, and economics because you want to see how do those different areas intersect. What is the secretary of education's policy on school vouchers, and what do economists say about it, or whatever it might be. So combining these different search terms can help you to find sources and can also help you to phrase your question to decide what is it that you want to research and how do you want to approach it. So the next steps at this point, um, moving on from this, would be the lectures that I've already posted, refining your research topic and from questions to problems. Both of those talk about issues that uh, are related to developing the material that you've got from this process into something more focused that can be the grounds for your research paper.